In this video, we're going to continue translating contextual problems into inequalities. Let's read the next one. Yesterday, the amount of rain in Scottsdale was at most four millimeters, was at most four more millimeters than the amount of rain in Tempe. Okay, so notice I stopped when I saw was at most because that's telling me what our connective or comparative is going to be. So I saw was, which is past tense for is, so we're going to want to use this to connect to an inequality symbol. So first, notice we're going to define our variables, and notice an S has appeared because here there's actually two variables. So we're comparing two things that are unknown or can change. And the first is the amount of rain in Scottsdale, yesterday. Notice based on this piece of information we're going to measure that in millimeters. And then we have another unknown or variable amount, the amount of rain in Tempe yesterday. So since we're measuring the same thing, rain in millimeters, I'm going to use S for Scottsdale and T for Tempe so I can remember which one is which. So S equals the amount of rain in millimeters in Scottsdale yesterday. Okay. And again, I know this is a lot to write. You don't just want to put rain. Okay, We're measuring something. We're measuring the amount of rain. We're measuring it in millimeters, not inches or feet. Okay, And we're also, this is the Scottsdale variable, so we need to indicate that. And the problem also said yesterday, so we want to be clear about that as well. Our variable capital T for Tempe is going to be identical, except we'll replace Scottsdale with Tempe. So the amount of rain in millimeters in Tempe yesterday. Okay. So now we want to write a symbolic inequality for this statement. So let's see how they're connected in the sentence. So first we have the amount of rain in Scottsdale, okay, in millimeters yesterday. So that's what we define to be S. So I'm going to put S here. And notice on the right-hand side of the verb, we have four more millimeters than the amount of rain in Tempe. Well, four more than T, we'll write that as T plus 4. Okay. So these are the values we're comparing. And now let's see whether we use less than or is greater than. And then we're going to see whether we can include um, the boundary value, meaning also have it equal to. So here are the words was at most. So what does was at most mean? Is it less than or is greater than? So let's go back to our problem. Say your salary today was at most, oops, was at most $100. See how much sense it makes when you just make it about how much money you're making? Okay, so if your salary today was at most $100, Okay. That means you made any value up to and including $100. So was at most actually means is less than, and since you can make the maximum of $100, it could be equal to. Okay. So S is less than or equal to T plus 4. Okay. So I know you have to be careful with these and you really should think about them and we'll make our examples and test them to make sure it makes sense. Okay, Because I know most sounds like more, which sounds like greater. Um, those words seem to be connected, but it actually ends up being the reverse direction than you'd expect. It is less than. Okay. So list two values of the variables that make the inequality true. So... Since S is by itself, I'm going to pick a value for S first, and then I'll make sure that I pick a value of T that makes it true. 
So let's say in Scottsdale yesterday, it rained one millimeter. Sounds like Scottsdale. Okay. Well, then one has to be less than or equal to four more than the amount it rained in Tempe. So notice there's a whole bunch of values that can be true. <coughs> Even with the S being equal, equal to one millimeter. Okay. So I'm going to pick Tempe. Let's give them two millimeters of rain. Only in Arizona do we measure rain in millimeters. Okay, so let's just check that this is true. So this would be Scottsdale is one, Tempe would be two plus four, which is six, and one is less than or equal to six. So that works. I'm just going to erase those so we can do our next one. So now let's have it rain 10 millimeters, which is a full centimeter in Scottsdale. So this will be 10. Okay. So now 10 has to be less than or equal to the amount in Tempe plus four. Okay. So I'm going to have it be exactly equal to if we made the Tempe value six, six plus four equals 10 and 10 is less than or equal to 10. Okay. So this would also be a value that makes this inequality true. Notice if I made Tempe any more than six, it would also be true. Okay. 10, 12, 15, all of those sums would be greater than 10 millimeters. Now let's make some examples where this is not true. Okay, so I'm going to start with So some things I know, since this context is rain, okay, if I make Scottsdale zero, that will always be less than this, since Tempe has to be greater than zero, or zero or greater, that right-hand side would be four. So I'm going to pick some bigger numbers. Okay, so I'm going to pick 10 millimeters for Scottsdale, okay, and then if Tempe was only, say, two millimeters of rain, 10 would not be less than or equal to six. So I'm going to use two millimeters. And I'm going to make another value based on 10. If Scottsdale was 10 millimeters, and let's erase this and find another value. I'm going to think of another value I can add to 4. So when I sum it with 4, it's not greater than or equal to 10. So how about 0? Okay. So 0 plus 4 is 4 millimeters. Okay. So 10 is not less than or equal to 4 millimeters. So these pairs of variables make the inequality false. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Rolando is taking at least three more credits than Jesse. Okay. So let's see where our connectives are here. So here we have is taking, and I was thinking that was our, because I saw the is. And, but now I'm looking at the at least, so is taking at least three more credits than Jesse. So we had to extend the is to cover the at least part. Okay, so this is going to be our connective. Okay, so we always have to look for is um, with just is, and it's an it's an equation. We need least or greater or less than or more than as part of our connective. So define our variables. So we're comparing uh, the amount of credits that Rolando is taking and the amount of credits that Jesse is taking. So again, I'm going to use the initials of their names since they're both going to be the number of credit hours, but for different people. So R equals the number of credits Oops, it's supposed to be Rolando Rolando is taking And we'll let J equal the number of credits J 
Jesse is taking. Okay. So on the left hand side of the comparative verb phrase, we have, it just says Rolando, okay, but this is referring to the number of credits Rolando is taking. So we're going to use R. And on the right hand side, we have at least three more credits than Jesse. So we want to compare Rolando's number of credits to Jesse's number of credits plus three. Now the question is, what inequality symbol do we put here? So we have at least or is at least. So let's think about money again. You work tonight and you made at least $100. Well, if you made at least $100, you could have made $100 or you could have made more than $100. So at least means greater than or equal to. And again, I apologize for the English language. Least looks very much like less than, but it's really greater than. And last we saw at most, we think it's going to be greater than, but it's less than. So when you put them into a context you're familiar with, you can really have a better chance at making sense of them. Okay. Now let's list two values of the variable that make the inequality true. Okay. I'm going to pick a value for Jesse now and then pick a value for Rolando that's bigger than this side. So we use kind of the other direction on the last problem. So if I say that Jesse is taking 10 credits, then Rolando must be greater than or equal to 10 plus 3. So let's make it equal. So he's making or taking at least three more credits than Jesse. And in this case, it's exactly three more credits. Let's make an example where it's not identical. Let's say Jesse is taking nine credits. Well, nine plus three is 12, so Rolando's credits must be greater than or equal to 12. And let's give him a rough schedule. Let's give him 18 credits. Okay, so both of these values for these pairs of variables make this inequality true. Let's find some that make this false. Now I want to not cheat, but do the easiest one I can think of. Okay. So since Rolando is taking at least three more credits than Jesse, I know that Rolando's credits are not less than Jesse's. So if I say Ro Rolando is five and Jesse is taking more, say 12, I know this absolutely cannot be the case. And we can verify this if we put it in here, five, this would be 12 plus three. Five is not greater than 15, so that's not true. Okay. Another example that would not be true is if, let's say, Jesse is taking 10 credits, and if Rolando is just taking one more, say 11 credits, that's not at least three more than Jesse. So that's another example that would make this not true. So we have one more example and we'll do that in the next video.